second question this uh, he is demanding a short session on the hereafter especially the stages or the phases uh, after death yes uh, this is a bit lengthy there are no specific hadith or ayat to mention about the exact stages or steps of them but from gathering the verses in the Holy Quran and the hadith of the messenger وسلم, scholars mention a certain uh, line or stages the first one is being raised from the dead raised from the dead so all creatures were raised from the dead by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they will all gather in what is called Ard al-Mahshar the place of gathering they will gather by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course at the time the earth and the skies have already changed it's a totally different universe and the earth would have expanded a lot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about the how of all of these information now they will all gather for an mahshar and they will stand there for a very very long time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the approximation of 50,000 years the sun is extremely close to them but it's already dead the sun is dead no more shining but it's still extremely hot and it is very close to them and they are sweating and they sweat according to their bad deeds so the more bad deeds get revealed, the more sweat the person will have till some of them get their sweat up to the level of their midlines or navel lines up to their chest, up to their necks, all the way to people who could barely breathe because of their sweat and they will remain there for a very long time after this long standing all of them are standing then there will come the first sign of relief it, wa it will be by the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that sign of relief is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings for him what is called al-hawd hawd al-kawthar of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is the basin of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it will be presented or raised and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will give a drink to any follower of his any follower who did not change the deen of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Anyone who changed the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah or the Deen of the Messenger of Allah will not be allowed, such as the hypocrites and the deviants, etc. So they will still appear as Muslims, but the angels will stop them, and the Messenger of Allah will call them over and says, "This is my followers. These are my followers, my nation." The angels will tell him, "No, you do not know what they changed after you. They have messed up their religion with all kind of." Uh, wrong ideas, wrong belief, and nor, nor wrong practices, and hypocrisy, etc. Then after that, every prophet and messenger will have his own basin, and he will give a drink to his followers. So Jesus, peace be upon him, will have a basin, and he will give drink to his followers, Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and the rest of the prophets and messengers. And then they will continue standing for a very long time. And then they seek the intercession from Adam alayhi salam, and he will not do that. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, none of them will agree to intercede. Everyone will say, myself, myself. Now this is a time when everybody is busy. Each one of them remembers some of his, what is called mistake. Only literally we call it a mistake. But because of this situation, they do not dare to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for intercession although these are extremely minor things then they will come to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand up for it and he says I am up to this and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will prostrate there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how long and he will supplicate and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praise that he does not knew on earth something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach him there and he will continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to relieve people from this standing and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept his supplication and his praise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him raise your hand your, your head raise and intercede and your intercession will be accepted and ask and you will be given so the messenger وسلم, will speak about the difficulties of people that they are facing and then the accountability will start 
Now in the beginning, the works or the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one, there is a presentation of the deeds. This is the deed of so and so. And this presentation has an accountability or hisab. But this accountability is with argument and excuses. So something is there and the body is arguing and giving excuses and back and forth, etc. That is the first type of accountabilities. And then the leaflets or the books of each one of them, they will fly over and each one takes his own by his hand. Some of them takes it by the right hand and some of them takes it by the left and some of them from there behind, etc according to their deeds. Those who are righteous will take it by the hand, right hand, and those who are, uh, did, did bad thing, get forbid, they will take it by the uh, left hand. Then you will have the, now each one of them will read his own book. Now it's not about excuses anymore. Speech is over. This is the record. This is the video camera that captured you speeding on Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road. It's not about why did you speed. Here it is. This is the proof. Now, each one is presented and he reads it himself. So he realized, this is mine for sure. He realized every single thing that he said. Whatever speech, whatever action, whatever hint, whatever elements, good or bad, he will find it. Everything. And that is when they will say, they will, they will, they will speak in, 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 uh, upon themselves, praying against themselves. What have we done? This book does not leave a minor thing or a major thing except that it has it written. Ya Allah, what will we do? La Unbelievable. Every single thing. Find it in front of him. Now, then the deeds are weighted. The deeds are weighed. They will put on a scale. The good deed here and the bad deed there. And each one, it depends. Anyone whose good deed is more than his bad deed, he is a winner. Anyone whose bad deed is more, he is on a dangerous scale now. He does not know what is going to happen to him. Now, uh, there are some narrations, but they are weak. And you might hear it sometimes here and there about people seeking even one single hasana from the parents, from the fathers, from anybody, and nobody's gift. It's true. At that day, this is a real, this is a real part of the narration. None, nobody's ready to give anything to anyone. Everybody is ready to sacrifice all his beloved one just to save himself at that time. From the difficulties that they are seeing. Everybody. He is ready to save himself from the punishment by even sacrificing everyone. Interestingly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned there are two stages at that time. One of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the person at that time escapes, run away from his father and mothers and, and, and children and wives and relatives and everyone. <coughs> Runs away. He's not ready to withstand with them or take with them or share with them or anything. When it comes to the punishment and the sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions similar things, but he does not mention the father and mother. He says, the person is ready to sacrifice. And he mentioned the children and the wives and the families and the, all the tribe, all his tribe. But he does not mention the father and mother. Why is that? In the escape, yes, he escaped from them. But in the sacrifice, because he does not dare even think about that, because this is something that will anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows, not the parents. The parents, I order you to do the exact opposite to parents. And you come, you say, you want to sacrifice them? So he does not even think about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sacrifice does not mention the father and mother. Although the verses are very similar. This is one of the beautiful aspects of the Holy Quran. The preciseness of the Holy Quran about this. You know. Now after these are weighed, then uh, the accountabilities, the second accountabilities come now. Is this yours? Have you done this? And the righteous people and those who are saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will acknowledge everything they have done, good or bad. But those who are doomed, some of them will still deny, God forbid. They will still deny, no, I haven't done that. And he'll think that he can still save himself by a little sweet talk here and smooth talking. It doesn't work. 
Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, fine, what about the angels as a proof? He said, no, I want a witness from myself. I do not accept the witness of anybody. I don't trust anybody, only myself. Ask me, I'll tell you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, fine. So his mouth is sealed shut. And his limbs are asked about whatever they have done. And they will convince to everything. They will speak to their creator. To their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will say whatever they have done. And then the seal is removed from his mouth. And the first thing he will do, he will start cursing his own limbs. So what are you doing? I was trying to save you from hellfire. <laughs> Speaking to them. This time, that's it. There are no more arguments. Everything now is sealed. So now people pass towards hellfire, God forbid. All of them, good and bad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread the darkness. There will be total darkness. Hell is in front. And there is a sirat on top of the hellfire. And it is extremely thin. And very sharp. And you cannot see anything. And hell is below. And you are supposed to cross over. Now people will have light with them. And that light will be their good deeds and their wudu and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some of them will have lots of shining lights about them and some of them have with very few lights here and there. And then the speed of their movement is according to their good deeds. Those who had lots of good deeds, they will move extremely fast. The Messenger وسلم, said about their speed, some of them will be as fast as lightning, as the return of lightning. The Messenger وسلم, said, as fast as the return of lightning. What is the return of lightning? Something that the Arabs does not use. This is a very strange form. They asked the Messenger وسلم, what is the return of the lightning? The Messenger وسلم, said, haven't you observed that the lightning strikes and returns back in less than the blink of an eye? Now nobody knew about that. Nobody knew about that. We only know about this nowadays with the extreme advancement in slow motion photography or high speed photography. High speed photography. The lightning, when it strikes, bounces back. Part of it bounces back, subhanAllah. How does the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that? Prove that this is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He's not speaking from his own. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, whatever he says, it is a revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also mentioned ar raja in uh, Surah Al-Tariq. And I swear by the sky that has what returns back. The return, the same word that the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used for lightning there. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, after this mentioned, verily this is a very precise speech. It is not just a talk. This is a very precise speech to know that this is from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is giving the proof. Now, people will pass as fast as the return of lightning. People will fast as a speeding horse rider, and as a runner, as a walker, fast walker, as a walker, and some of them will crawl, and some of them will turn right and there, right and left, and some of them will fall down and hold on and fall and hold and fall and hold till they pass. What proves, what, what protects people is many things, including the salah upon the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and dua and sadaqah and the sadaqah in secret, etc. Now, and some of them will fall down, guess what? including among the believers, some of them will fall into hellfire. Those who will be punished first, and then they will be purified, and then they will enter later on. Now, when they move away after finishing, after crossing over, they will stand on the plains before paradise. So now, the hellfire is behind, paradise is ahead, all those who passed are winners, but there is one more thing. Another accountability, subhanAllah. This accountability is different. This accountability is about the rights of people among themselves, the believers. You have some hard feeling for your brother and sisters. You have some hatred for this person. You have some enmity for that person. You have some backbiting for that person, envy, etc. All of these illnesses in the hearts. They do have, right? Muslims have it. We are human beings. 
But that is also wrong because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that none enter paradise except those who are purified, 100% pure or you never enter. So now this accountability is to purify you from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifying them from that all, it will be removed from their hearts. After all of this is settled, then they will go toward paradise. The first to open the gates of paradise will be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first one, and he says, as I am trying to enter paradise, I see a woman trying to speed up before me. Subhanallah, I ask, what is this? Who is she? Who has this great honor? And she's a woman who took care of her own orphans and does not remarry for the sake of her children and spends, dedicate herself to growing them up and educating them, subhanAllah. The woman that will compete with the Messenger وسلم, to enter. The Messenger وسلم, will be the first and then the rest of the prophets and the messengers and the righteous people, etc. Each one of them according to his good deeds. When they will enter paradise, now paradise is extremely vast, but each one of them will know his place in paradise and his own families there and his own places, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for him better than he knows his own house in this world. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran and they will be admitted into paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them recognize. He made it recognized by them. So he's already have the knowledge as if he has lived there all throughout his life. This is a summary of the stages of paradise. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who will be among the people of paradise inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the bless of the companionship of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Al-Firdaus al-A'la, the highest place in paradise inshallah, among the rest of the prophets and messengers and the righteous and the martyr. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his divine truth, make us good for ourselves and our families, our neighbor and society, and then all of humanity. I mean, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam